Now, first of all, I hear you are a hat expert. Is that safe to say? Well, that's subjective. But I mean, I do work in a hat shop, so I'd like to think I know a bit about hats. I don't make hats, though, so that takes out half the, the struggle. So you're a hat expert, but you're also a music expert. Can you tell us a little bit about your debut record that just came out? Um, my record, Time, it just came out in June. Um, it's, yeah, it's my debut album. I don't, I don't really know what to say about it other than it's now an entity that exists in the world. Um, it took two years to make and I'm actually, it, it's exciting that it's out, it's also very nerve wracking because like the sonic entity is born but now it's like the business, the business side of it that I'm still, you know, learning about so yeah, it's, uh, it's out there for the world, literally so. It's exciting. <laughs> it's very exciting. I mean, I remember hearing Time, the single came out probably a couple years ago. Long time coming. I mean, what does it feel like being an artist and finally getting to that point where you can share this with the world and you're now going on tour with it too? It feels, well, it's just, it's, it's terrifying to be completely honest because you're doing, for, for me at least, I'm doing it not for anyone else but myself. So the whole, you know, the whole element where like you're in the public eye and people have opinions about something that you didn't really think about having an opinion. You just like you created it and then like wanted to, to like see it come to life. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's just, it is, <laughs> I can't remember the question. <laughs> That's how it feels, you know. You're talking about how intimidating it can be a little bit, and then I'm sticking cameras in your face here. Thanks for putting up with this. <laughs> no, it's like, it's good. It's um, it's just hard for some for someone like myself who's so nervous about everything. And like, I, I started making music when I was seven, and like I wrote my first song when I was nine, and, and it's all just being a very slow, an organic process I'm like no one in my family is musically inclined and so it, it I mean I I've just done it myself so I I guess it's just I guess in that sense like I'm proud of being able to have found something that I feel like I can stick with it's also just very therapeutic and just good for like having an outlet so yeah it's it's just very interesting I guess in a nutshell <laughs> Uh, the new video that goes with that record, the newest one anyway, Sunday Sarah came out, it was produced by CMYK Productions. They do a lot of really nice stuff. Um, I mean, our viewers just got to see it, but it's a, there's a little depth to it. The message, I know it's open to interpretation with people who view or listen to this type of stuff, but for you, with that, I mean, the imagery, I guess, in the video, what was really, what stood out, what made you want to choose that as the direction for the video? Um, for Sunday Sarah, what we, CMYK, and I, we talked about sort of the approach of the video that we wanted to do, taking it a bit, you know, in a different route than what the song is about. Um, so we kind of like honed in on, you know, my own personal struggles, and one of them is um, a close relative has, um, you know, a battle with drug addiction. So we kind of conceptualized this idea of like, you know, going from this very young, naive, um, pure person and and like I mean uh, the video just like is just an analogy for like how deep you can get into it so like she starts off you know larger than life she's never like nothing's touched her like she lives in a white room and then you know the deeper she gets into her addiction like the the more she loses herself so yeah it was it was really neat to explore that because I mean it's it's not it's not an easy thing and like an addiction it lasts a lifetime like it never it never goes away um, it's always a battle so um, yeah as long as as long as we're able to like understand how to like you know handle someone who's going through that and support them then that's like the biggest thing for me so yeah I just I had a lot of fun with the the video it was a lot of fun to make so I loved it too. No, it's a great video and a great song. Um, little different direction right now. Would it be safe to say, and I'm going somewhere with this, so trust me, safe to say that you are very West Coast? Yeah, I'd say I'm West Coast, yeah. What do you think makes you West Coast? Well, for one, I am really into recycling. <laughs> and if, I mean, after touring across Canada and in you know, places in the States, I realized that 
we're very lucky for our like recycling program here <laughs> and I like live a very zero waste lifestyle and so yeah I, I realize that's kind of like a west coast thing because that seems to be like what we do here and not where anyone else is doing even though I think it's so good and we should all do it so. yes we should Toronto get on that Alberta yeah I've been there you guys don't compost so. <laughs> wow throw down right there other parts of Canada I was also gonna go very Vancouver maybe more than West Coast or anything you've toured hot yoga studios with your music is this true that is true actually one of my night jobs is playing music in hot yoga studios so I play through um, a company called Moksha and I've been doing that for two years and so I dedicate my night to playing in a sweaty room for yogis <laughs> it's a lot of fun though and I did yeah I toured uh, across um, BC and Alberta playing all of the, the studios so that was a lot of fun Speaking of sweaty rooms and music, which is a better venue, the hot yoga studio or the rickshaw? <laughs> you know what? The rickshaw is such a cool venue. Um, I've seen so many neat artists there that you wouldn't see in a yoga studio, like Pizza Underground, um, Macaulay Culkin's band. So, I mean, <laughs> they both have their place, you know? Um, I love playing in this, the yoga studios, though, so it's like... It's, it's hard to say. I, I, I just love intimate shows, so, so I mean, the rickshaw is like, you know, a venue that like, that I, you know, I would have dreamed to play on because it's like a very traditional venue and a yoga studio is like, why are you playing in there? And then you go in there and, you, and then it makes sense. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, and going with venues, we're about to turn uh, Gurren Brothers into a venue tonight. So thank you for having us in here. Do, uh, what song are you going to be playing for us? And could you tell us a little bit, give us a preface to the song. The song I'm going to play tonight is, uh, is Smitten, and it's off the album. Um, and basically I wrote it um, after uh, a breakup with someone who I was with for a very long time, and it was like four days after, and I wrote this song. I was on the Sky Train, and I just moved out of my place really quickly. Like, within 24 hours, sort of my life sort of flipped upside down. So. Yeah, I wrote that song just kind of like internalizing everything. For me, it was just me thinking about the perfect sort of, you know, meet with someone, like a meet cute. So I was thinking of a meet cute when I wrote it. So this is a song all about when Alexandria Mayo had her life flipped turned upside down. Uh, let's, I'd like to take a minute. We're going to let her play Smitten Bray right here on Indie Mixtape. 